Hello and welcome back. In the last episode, we created a basic score display so that the user can see how they're doing. Um, in this episode, we're going to create a start menu. So the first thing we want to do is go to new scene and make sure you save the old scene. And then, um, actually, you know, well, why don't we use that basic scene for the start menu? So go ahead and load whatever you named the scene before, um, and then go into yeah, let's let's just use this view. So we don't need the player, and make sure you save this as a new scene. I'm gonna name this main menu, and then I deleted the player. Now I'm just gonna create a, a camera, and uh, actually Control Z to um, put the put the character back. Um, I want to create a new camera, but I want it to be in roughly the same position. So I'm gonna right click on him, create camera move that off of him and then delete the FPS controller. So now if we go back into the game view we just have this new camera that's sort of like on the ground and it's not gonna have any sort of like mouse control. So now if we hit play uh, it actually it broke because the monster is looking for the player but the player doesn't exist. Um, but this is the view that we're gonna use for the start screen. Um, so to fix that, just click on, uh, we don't need the second axon, so you can delete him. And then click on the first one and just delete his movement scripts. Delete, delete, and delete. And then if we play, now he just comes up out of the ground. Uh oh. Something broke. Uh, go ahead and undo that. Which one of these do we need? Go ahead and hit play. Okay, so it broke in movement twice on line 23 and line 37. So rather than um, getting rid of those and then having him fall on his face in a broken way, um, I'm just going to open up those scripts. We need to focus on line 23 and 37. On line 23, um, we're trying to find the player transform game object we can't find him and then so there's nothing is returned and then we try to find the transform component of that nothingness and that breaks so go ahead and delete the last part of that line um, we still want player transform to receive a trans like the transform of something um, but what we're gonna do is game object that should be a capital G. Game object player equals, um, and, and it's only breaking because we're we're trying to get the component on a thing that doesn't exist. Um, we can we can still search for the object, so search for it like that. Find the player if he exists, and then for his component, we'll still do the same thing. We'll just say player dot transform. So these two lines are now doing the exact same thing that this one line w was doing before. Um, but the benefit of doing it this way is if player equals null, uh, actually if the player is not null. So now our, our code can never break because if we find a player, it, it's not going to be null and then we're going to get his transform. If we don't find a player, it is null, and we skip this line. So the, there's there's no possible errors to come out of that. Um, the next one was on line 37. Um, but I think that moved. So let's go ahead and save this. Oh, and yeah, actually, that it, it was on 37, but now it's on line 41. So go, go ahead and do if player transform is not null. So just make sure we have a, a player. Um, if we do have a player, we'll do this. If we don't have a player, we'll skip it. Once again, uh, oh, and then it um, it w it won't break there, but it could break here. So let's go ahead and put everything within these, like that. So now, if we don't have a reference to a player, 
just ignore all of this. Like, obviously we can't run toward the player if he doesn't exist. So close those, hit play. Um, now, now, thankfully there's no errors, but for some reason it still fell on its face. That's annoying. Um, what should we do about that? I guess we could just take off this rigid body. That'll probably fix it. Okay, that worked. And let's go ahead and create a second controller. So just just find the first creature one controller, duplicate that, and then delete the second node. Now go back to your axon drag creature 2 onto his controller and now when he spawns up out of the ground he should just stand there yeah and he kind of freezes in place we should probably give him some sort of idle animation so let's check if he has one creature attack, attack 2, attack 3, die, get hit idle, right there make transition Okay, so now he comes up out of the ground and he just sort of stands there. Um, if we don't want him to come up out of the ground, I guess that did look sort of tacky. We can just go straight from entry to creature idle and set that as the default state. So now he just starts there. Um, I'm I'm also noticing that the rock is pretty um, pretty poorly textured right there. So I'm gonna grab that rock in the scene view and spin it like so I'm just trying to hide the really shitty looking part yeah that looks better now what else do we want to do um, we're gonna need to delete the floating text I'm just going to highlight those and uncheck them. Alright, and now I want to put the, the menu sort of like floating right here. I'm going to put that in the next video.